All right, bulls and bears, hope you are doing well. Back with another dose, folks. Economic reality. Well, the reality is finally starting to hit the markets. We're seeing a lot of weakness. We're seeing a lot of fear, a lot of uncertainty amongst the big uh, holders of most stocks, which is the top 10% who own about 90% of all stocks in existence right now. They're starting to finally see uh, the writing on the wall, the fear. Uh, they're in fear. I mean, I don't think any of us are in fear because we've been ready for this for a long time. And in fact, I'm ready for the collapse. I'm positioned right now perfectly, I think, for a big, big drop, right? So we'll see what kind of rescue programs, what kind of propping up of the markets they try to bring out. But let's go to a chart here. And I wanted to show you the S&P 500. Speaking of bigger declines, look at this drop here. Uh, from 51.99, boom down to 5061 this is a one month chart and you have to wonder how stocks remained uh this elevated to begin with i mean we've had these global conflicts unwinding now for what going on two years now a lot of uncertainty out there the debt levels are enormous we're going to talk about that here uh, in just a few minutes and what's happening with some of the homeowners here in san diego and some other markets uh but first let's go ahead and get into this we've got more layoffs here and uh, this is a big one. Uh, this is Tesla, folks. Tesla, we're seeing a big pullback in the popularity of electric vehicles. Tesla lays off more than 10% of its global workforce. They're having to slash prices. They've been slashing prices for about a year now, over a year. But now we're seeing continued slowdown in the demand for these electric vehicles. Um, I don't think they're going away. I think there's always going to be uh, a market for it, but I think it was kind of a mania over the past few years with the higher gas prices, right? So I think it caused a mania, but what people found out that in a lot of cases, it was more expensive, even though you're saving money on gas, a lot of things were more expensive about these electric vehicles, the repair costs, uh, the insurance costs, a lot of things were you know, much higher. Uh, getting the hookup at home to charge your own vehicle, uh, the inconvenience of charging your vehicle somewhere else if you don't have a charger at home, Right, finding locations, uh, a lot of reasons behind that. But anyways, pretty big layoffs out of Tesla. Please let me know what you think about that down in comments. Now, here's what could be the shocker, the shocker of the day here. This is out of Bloomberg. We've got Williams out there uh, expecting rate cuts, even though inflation came in higher than expected. So what does Mr. Williams know? Um, why? Why would you be cutting rates if inflation is ramping up and if it's more and higher than you expected, it doesn't make any sense, right? That tells me that something is really wrong behind the scenes, behind the scenes there. New York Fed chief says monetary policy is in a good place, right? Okay, it's so good that we need to cut rates, right? Try to make sense out of that. Try to try to unwind that one. And inflation, if inflation gradually eases, it would be appropriate to cut. Uh, that, that's a big if. Uh, a lot of people are saying they're just going to put out false numbers to justify the rate cuts to try to keep this economy propped up, to keep it elevated until the end of 2024. That's what many people are speculating. Um, I think a lot of things could happen before the end of the year, uh, even unexpected things and even big global uh, things happening right now on the war front. Uh, other hostilities that are likely to occur with the uh, the attacks and the hacks on the U.S. grid. So uh, keep your power to drive, folks, because there's some big, big risks out there uh, to be aware of. How are we doing on gold and silver? My gold and silver stackers out there, well, we're at just under 2400 on gold. Silver, just under $29, right? We're not seeing a pullback like we did before. Remember when silver almost hit $30, was it three years ago, two and a half? Uh, it dropped back down. We could see that type of manipulation again, but a lot of people are speculating that the manipulation will end, that the central banks and all the big buyers of these precious metals, at some point, they're going to let the price go. In other words, the manipulators, I think, are in on it uh, with the ones that are buying it right now. I think the central banks are actually in on it. They're hoarding the most gold, right? Every year we see new records uh, set by central bank purchases of these precious metals. And um, at some point, they've got to let the price go to where it should be in order to have their uh, stacks, so to speak, uh, to have their investments get in at the real value. In the meantime, most people in America, 
struggling just to get by. And a lot of people don't have extra money to buy precious metals on the side, right? So a lot of people are going to miss this. They've been missing out. That's why I've said here ever since this channel's inception, if you don't have a lot of money, it's okay. Maybe just buy a few ounces uh, every month if you can, right? Uh, I know a lot of people, if you just cut out a few things here and there, you'll have an extra 50, 60, 80 bucks. I'd buy you three, four, five ounces of silver. Well, not now at today's prices, but over the past few years, just a few, uh, take away a few trips to a fast food place, take away some unnecessary drinks. If you're buying, you know, Starbucks coffee, that could be an ounce of silver every week right there. Just cutting out one Starbucks coffee a day, actually more than that. If you're looking at seven days a week, uh, was it $4, let's say for a cup of coffee, that's $28 a week on a seven day week. And uh, even at today's price, you can get yourself an ounce of silver. That's four ounces of silver a month just by cutting out one drink, right? So those that buy Starbucks every day, hopefully that's not a lot of you. Uh, I used to work with people and a lot of them used to drink two Starbucks a day. Uh, it was crazy, right? So anyways, a uh, separate topic here for a separate time. Well, let's get into some other news I've got pulled up here for you. Now let's go ahead and get into the driver of the economy. What is it? It's consumer spending and what enables the consumer to keep spending even though debt levels are at record highs? Well, that's the banks continuing to give out loans and we have more loosening and looser lending. Take a look at this. Some of you may be shocked at this, but this is what I said will likely happen. If we continue to see loose lending, people able to still get loans, then you could see this economy keep going way uh longer and, and remain stronger than what a lot of people had anticipated out of market watch here per kelly blue book car loans are getting easier to qualify for but down payments are still high yes and those two go hand in hand right when loans are easier to get uh prices will stay high when banks cut off lending or make it much more difficult to get a loan then prices come down it's simple right less demand less people getting loans lower prices folks they don't want prices to come down so what do they have to do they have to make the lending easier and uh, this is what i said will likely happen even though debt levels are at all-time highs much worse than the financial crisis even though delinquencies are rising and in many areas delinquencies now have surpassed the financial crisis levels not housing or real estate yet but in many areas if you look at uh, subprime credit card borrowers uh, the subprime car loan borrowers were at or near where we were back in the financial crisis so you would think in a normal world right that banks would be starting to be concerned about how much money they're loaning out in this environment but no we have the infinite uh propping up of these banks or the endless liquidity injections into the banking system that are going to allow it looks like it looks like allow banks to continue to loan out money even though uh we're in a lot of trouble a lot of people are in a lot of trouble uh, for the amounts of debt right now and delinquencies. And it's just going to get worse, right? Because prices are going up faster. We talked about the inflation number earlier, uh, the unexpected 3.5%, which is a lot higher. All right, now let's talk about what's happening at a lot of the retailers. You know it, I know it. It's all over the place now. Something else we told you was going to continue to get worse. We've got the 99 cent store going out of business, a lot of other stores closing locations and uh, branches. What's what's happened in San Francisco? This is crazy, folks. Out of Benzinga. Crime ridden San Francisco seeks to allow lawsuits against grocery stores fleeing the city as mass corporate exodus continues. In other words, if you're a grocery store that's seeing a lot of losses because of the theft problem, which California, we don't want to punish actual thieves out here, right? So the problem is going to continue to get worse. If you're a business or especially a grocery store retailer, looking to get out of here right they're going to punish you they're looking to have an exit tax basically is what it amounts to uh and it's their fault it's the state's fault uh for allowing this type of behavior to go on to cause the grocery stores to want to leave the state right this is insane folks and something else being reported here is our communities need notice they want to make these grocery stores give uh, what six months notice before they plan on leaving to find a to help find a replacement store to fill the vacancy and um, according to the proposal anyone impacted by a non-complying grocery store could initiate legal proceedings so they're going to go after these grocery stores legally 
uh, for not complying or for not giving the proper notifications, right? So this is uh, what I said would happen, folks. It's going to get crazier. And, um, you know, nothing's being done to actually fix the problems with what's happening here in California. Other cities as well, other states have similar problems. Also, I don't want to forget to say happy tax deadline day. Today is April 15th. And we've got a lot of people, a lot of homeowners, property owners, not able to pay their taxes, sadly, and especially uh, the flood victims there. We've got San Diego, of course, where I'm at. We've got people up in Rhode Island um, getting tax relief because the consumer is so strong and so resilient that uh, they have all kinds of money on the side that they could just go ahead and pay their taxes even after storm damage. We know that's not true, right? So we see headlines like this. Tax relief for Connecticut, uh, Rhode Island storm victims, right? If everybody had so much money set aside, if the consumer was strong and resilient, like we're told, uh, seems like everybody would just be able to pay their payments. <laughs> Why do we have to have all these relief programs, right? Hundreds of different uh, relief programs, it seems like. Uh, Maine, Rhode Island talks about here. Uh, more San Diego articles here. All right, so you guys get the picture on that. Update to my uh, report, though. I talked about how my Subway sandwich that I used to get for, I thought it was seven ninety nine, was like almost fourteen dollars. That was at my last video, video before that. Uh, some of you down in comments on this channel let me know. Reminded me that Subway used to have the five dollar sub, and I guess uh, it's been a few years, but yes, I remember that. And um, I'd have to pull up, you know, old advertisements to find out exactly when it was. But yeah, many of you reminded me that Subway had the five dollar sub. Now we're 10 plus dollars, right? So there's your inflation right there. Um, good luck finding a foot long sub now for less than $10. And uh, so just look at that. How many years ago was that? That's a doubling of the price essentially, right? So 100% inflation, yet a lot of people are still buying this 3.5% nonsense, folks. Uh, and Subway is just the tip of the iceberg. That's just one of many examples. Uh, I like to put real examples out there of just everyday things. Fast food's a big one, right? With McDonald's doubling their prices in 10 years. Talked about that a couple of reports ago. We'll go back and watch that one. If you don't believe me, I showed a chart on that of the doubling of the price. Anyways, hope everybody's doing well. We're going to wrap this one up. What do you think about this today? What do you think about the Fed out there saying, oh, we might have to cut rates? Um, they're hoping. They're hoping inflation eases, but it's their policies that have caused this mess, or it's at least a big part of the cause of this mess, uh, leaving rates too low for too long. Um, not uh, requiring the banks to have any reserves so the banks can keep loaning out money. Uh, seems like to infinity. Uh, where's the send, folks? Let me know down below. Hope you guys like this report today and hope to see you in the next video. Please make sure you're still subscribed and we'll see you next time here as we navigate this economy together. Keep stacking. Bye for now. Peace.